from the Percussion Axiom TV. My name is Tom Burt, and I am your host. And as you can see, sitting next to me is the one and only Dr. John Parks. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> so we've been having... It's great to be back in Burbank. <laughs> we've been having too much fun over the last couple days. John gave an, uh, an amazing master class Monday afternoon here at UT, and uh, has been teaching like a madman. It's been fun. Like he requested. But, no, it's been great having him here, and he just coaching our kids a little bit on uh, percussion ensemble stuff. So, we just got in for his last day. He teaches more yet today, and we thought, let's roll the camera and see what happens. So, I have, two, thing, no, I, I have two things that have been on my mind since I was in the shower this I'm morning. I'm scared now. Well, especially since you were thinking about them in the shower. All right, so, <laughs> to, they're very serious, though. All right, guest That's artists. That's where you do your best thinking, right? Guest artists. Mm -hmm. So this was, I don't know, maybe five, six weeks ago. Because I mean, it's important for the audience to understand that Tom and I and his wife Kristen have pretty much solved every problem that is facing the world over the last three days. We've talked about everyone. We have figured out every situation, every scenario. We have discussed things that would just make your hair curl. And it's been awesome. So there's not really much left except these two topics. Mm. So one of them is going to be how to lose weight without exercising or changing diet, because that's something I'm obviously interested in. <laughs> but the other, and that's what came from the shower. But the other one is guest artists. So so we're not going to talk about the weight thing right now. No, 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 no. Because well, I'm sure you'll probably get some responses. <laughs> and, you know, why don't you eat better? Why don't you exercise? Why don't you do whatever? Because it used to be that just stress alone would keep me I know. In that's my shape. secret, I think. And I'm more stressed than I've ever been in my life. But I think <laughs> something something's happened like it's reversed. You know, now it's, it's called aging. aging. God. Sorry, let's get, get back to it. All right, so... <laughs> Guest artists, this is several weeks ago, and I'm sure you get plenty of these every year. You know, the phone call, the cold call from somebody oh, yeah. says, hey, I'm going to be in town, and I want to come and, and talk with your kids. And so I get this one, and it's from a drum set player, and I don't know who it is, and that doesn't necessarily mean anything, because I, you know, I don't know everybody. Right. So, but I don't know the band that he's playing with either. You know pretty much, pretty much everybody. Well, no, I mean... I keep my ear close to the ground, but yeah, sure. it's like one degree of separation. Mm -hmm. So he, this guy, he calls up, cold call, and he's playing with some band, and I asked some of the students, I was like, do you know who this band is? Because they know much more about that stuff yeah. than I do. If it's Dream Theater, I'm with you. <laughs> if it's not, I'm not. So um, and they're like, we don't know who that is. Well, the message is, uh, John, hey, my name is... <laughs> And I'm interested in coming in and doing a presentation for your kids. Um, it's a great presentation. I've been doing it across the country. Um, you know, I've got books out, and I'm playing with this band. His name, <laughs> and we're going to be in town. And I'd really like to come in. And, and for a special extra fee, I can talk about motivation and self worth. Mm -hmm and making your students really feel like they're a part of the music business and, you know, like really working on their attitudes and their confidence. And I'm listening to this and I'm laughing because you and I both know that, like, our students are the last people that need something, <laughs> somebody to come in and tell them about confidence. Absolutely. You know? So I'm just kind of laughing. And then the guy drops the fee on me. $3,000. Now... All right, so, and, and this is what I was thinking about yesterday. You know, I had, um, Tom's had, I mean, he's making fun of it, but I told him that I would teach as many students as wanted to have lessons. And so we ended up with like 16 <laughs> or something like that, which was great. And we're paying, we're paying him 3500 actually, to do all that. No, well, here, here's the deal. <laughs> no, we're not. So, you know, I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not. Lee, I'm not Mike, I'm not, you know, Colin Curry Mike or Evelyn or Mike. <laughs> I'm not, you know, I'm not one no, of those guys. No, I get guys. your point, I get you your know, point. I'm just uh, a neither teacher. Am I. I'm just a teacher, you know, and I'm really lucky to be doing well, you, what I'm doing. You shouldn't sell yourself for short like that, but well, I so, admire your humble. But you things. understand what I'm saying. Yeah, absolutely. So, the thing that these people don't understand is that if I have $3,000, <laughs> I'm bringing in, like, so. <laughs> You know, or I'm going to bring in, you know, somebody huge. Right. You know, I'm going to bring in Mike because he's like, you know, 12 grand now to come <laughs> in and do a master class. So I'm going to do that instead. And I'm not going to... And the other thing is that you and I, we have our budgets. And if I say to myself, okay, I have, 
I don't know, a couple thousand dollars to bring in some people this year. I talk with the students and I say, who would you like to see? Yeah. You know, And they'll say, I want to see uh, Jim Campbell again, or I want to see Tom Burrett, or I'd like to see Mark Ford, or I want to get Sped up from Miami, or do whatever. Okay, great, you know, we can do that. Um, they had no idea who this person was. And I just thought, $3,000, have you lost your mind? <laughs> like, who's, who's worth that? I think that that's the key is like, you know, we all know people in the business and it's the ones we don't know that we don't, especially that we're not willing to put that much into, not because they may not be great, but because we just don't know. I mean, I, you know, I get this email all the time or call all the time, you know, just as you do. And the most important thing to me is I want to know what we're getting. I want to know this person. Not only do I want to know they're a great musician or a great teacher, but most importantly, you know, how is it going to go over with the students? Are they going to get right. more than just the information that that person has to share? Is it a good person? Is it someone they can, is someone that is important for them to know in the future and to make connections with? You know, so <clears throat> yeah, I've got several in my inbox right now. And there's so many of them that are. And so if I don't, bad. yeah, and if I don't know them, you know, that's a really hard sell. You know, if I haven't seen them do their thing, or you know, if I haven't experienced what they do, you know, so it's good to have fresh people in, you know, who maybe you're less familiar with, but. At the same time, if you don't know them. You know. Well, I'm not going to have anybody in. I mean, if it's a fresh person, great, but I'm going to make some phone calls. Right, you know, I'm going to call people I trust and yeah. say, how's this going to be? Because, I mean, there's so many bad people out there, and there's one in particular whose name, <laughs> <laughs> who I followed on a day of percussion once, and it was the most amazing thing I've ever seen. Like, all he did was trash, like, the entire percussion world, except for, you know, his thing. And I'll never forget it. It was like a couple years later, and I was at another day of percussion, and I was talking to one of my best friends. And we were talking about clinicians that, you know, we really, really liked. Like people that, hey, you should have this person in, or I had this person in, and he was great. You know, it was really terrific. Like right. Anders is one of my favorite people. Mm -hmm. He's just so positive and such a great player. And, you know, a lot of people haven't had a chance to be around him. So whenever people say, you know, who should I have in, you go, well, you got to have Anders, or you got to have. Tom, or you got to have Julie Hill, or whoever, you know, they're all great. And I was talking with this person, and I'll impersonate his voice, and for those of you who are sharp out there, maybe figure out, he's like, John, we had this person in the other day, and I was just, I was so confused by the material presented, and at the end I just found myself thinking, what have we shown our students? You know, and I knew exactly who it was. You know, and, and this person is like the nicest person on the world. He would never say anything. He wouldn't even step on an ant. You know, and for him to say that, I, and I knew exactly who he was talking about. And I just thought, God, you know, and these people, they're so expensive and they don't seem to understand that, you know, we don't, we're not made of money. And we know, if I have money, I know who I want to have in. Because right. I'm going to ask the kids and I'm going to do this. And so that's just my whole thing. And like self-motivation, -motiv like Stuart Smalley stuff, man, that is not what my kids need. <laughs> You know, <laughs> that's not what my kids. You gotta look at Stuart Smalley, uh, old Saturday Night Live stuff. I mean, it's right? So much better. It used to be so much better. You know, if you're wondering what that means, so, you know, I, I'm good enough. I'm smart enough. <laughs> yeah. And it, it gosh, gosh, gosh darn, darn it, people, people like, like me. <laughs> you don't have to dribble that ball down the court. And how many baskets do you have to make? You know, the one with Michael Jordan is my favorite. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so that's the whole guest artist thing. So anyway, I'm, I'm working with all the students yesterday, and it also occurs to me, and I know that some people do this, and you know, for, if you're one of these people, it's fine, you know, you do what you want. But I figure, if you have me in, and you know, I'm lucky to have some corporate backing, actually great corporate yeah. backing, uh, that makes it excellent and worthwhile, and, and you take care of a couple of basic who are your, things. Who are your corporate sponsors, by the uh, way? Pearl, Adam, so Sean LaFrance. Mm -hmm. Uh, Neil Grover, uh, Eric Johnson, George Barrett at Innovative, who I've been with for like 16 years, uh, Keith Leo at Zildjian, and uh, Bruce Jacoby and Brock Carricker at Remo. And these guys are just incredibly supportive of everything that my students do and my program Well, they're interested does. in education. You Absolutely. Know, and, they, and you're the conduit to getting that out. So know, they're great. their product, yeah. So you have me in, and I'm going to make some money and come in and do stuff, but I figure while I'm here... You know, I, I, that's what I'm here for. Like, you've paid me to come in and hang out, and so you want a lesson? You want to work on something? You want to work on Scheherazade or Velocities or whatever? I will listen. I will work with you. And it's been I know an easy some, week for me. I mean, I haven't been teaching at all. Well, and I figured this out a long time, man. I just bring people in and hang out and, you know, play Angry Birds <laughs> in the studio. <laughs> I am going to start playing yeah, Angry I know. Birds, I think. So, you know, point being... 
I feel like, you know, you've already done that. I mean, if somebody's here, then they should just, right. you know, what's the big deal? I mean, that's what we do, you know, and it helps everybody. And for me, you know, I've got kind of a dual or an ulterior motive because, you know, I want to check out the best players that you have, which fortunately is like every one of them. <laughs> but to let them see, hey, this is how I do, so when it's time to start looking at the next school, that they'll come look at us. Right, exactly. I don't well, that's the that. idea. I mean, I think, you know, it's, it's it, what I really like about your approach, and I connect with it, you know, very, very directly, is, you know, you, when you go places, you, you want to you wanna get in the, in the, you know, trenches, if you will, and really get down and, you know, work with the students, get to know them a little bit, because that connection very well can pay off in the future, and you don't really know how necessarily, oh, yeah. right? But <clears throat> you're excited about and so passionate about what you do that you, you're just dying to share these thoughts with them, you know. And even if it doesn't help you out later, you know, you've helped them along the way. And, and in that, from that perspective, you're giving back to your art. You're, you know, you're giving your ideas freely in that situation, you know, for their benefit. But always when you're willing to do that, I think it, 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 it pays off in one way or another. You know, yeah, and it, you know, just the whole idea of who you are and, and you know, getting the word out more about what you're doing. So, I should also mention that um, I'm not that comes across on the camera that um, I tried to match Dr. Burritt's hair color. I actually had this brilliant idea for this TV show because I've wanted to be on it ever since the first <laughs> one. Is uh, you know, I was going to wear like some really artsy thing, and then I was going to wear my Star Trek uniform. But the problem is that I put it on last Sunday, and I think sympathetically it relates to your first issue we had. Right, your first sympathetically, question. and I I didn't really realize this until I saw pictures of Halloween, and we're taking my three almost three year old son around to the houses in this neighborhood, and I'm wearing my Star Trek outfit, the new one for those of you who keep track. <laughs> and when I got it, it was like really good looking. I thought. You know, as Star Trek uniforms go, my yeah, wife's good on your spot. Facebook profile, right? But that's so that you only see from like here <laughs> down. So um, I put this thing on, and it's like kind of tight and everything, but not the kind of tight that's like flattering. The tight that's kind of like you shouldn't be wearing clothes like that. And I tried to get him to show up for can, the show wearing it. I was going to do that, and I was going to wear my Chris Ponder jersey, and you know, like get up and keep coming back and like make some union joke about how I can't work under these conditions and stuff, but. <laughs> I just decided not to bring it because I looked so horrible in it. I mean, it was like I put on Facebook. It's like the Chris Farley Chippendale skit. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it was terrible. Which leads all these to SNL references. I mean, look at this. Goulet. It's good. <laughs> Better watch your job, Johnny. <laughs> Tafoya. <laughs> but um, anyway, the other thing, the weight thing. You know, I'm sure the stress will take it off. I got another kid coming. Yeah, another January, kid coming. I'm probably going to be anorexic by February because I'm not going to have any money and I'm going to end up eating ramen noodles. I can tell you with three kids about that part. Well, see, well, look just, at you. just when you think you have enough money. It's, yeah. But look at you. I mean, you're you're a fine specimen. I try to run. Now see, That's if I all ran, I try to do. Now, and this brings us back. Maybe 12 miles a week, maybe 9, 12 miles a week. Are you... I could run ten minutes and I would vomit <laughs> profusely. And see, that's exactly what I want. I don't like it, but I have to do it. You know? I want to lose weight with no exercise and no lifestyle change and less stress. And I think that the only way it's going to happen. I think there's some drugs out there for that, maybe. Probably, but they have really bad side effects. <laughs> I mean, like that Ally or Ally stuff. Have you heard about I that? Heard about that? You take it, and if you eat potato chips, you lose control of your bowels. <laughs> Like, that's, that's the deal. Like, you know, it's kind of like, I mean, what could be worse? What motivation to keep from eating potato chips? Yeah. But I'm not really ready to take that because I'm at school, like, all day. And one little, I, I just couldn't do it. I, so I figure once the new Like we said, we just, we're, we're just going to hit record and see what happens, you know, so. Well, actually, we had one other idea just in case. And we decided that, you know, maybe we would do a little word association. Mm. Mm-hmm. You know, because I know with your other episodes, it's usually very serious material. You know, Third Coast and Seltzman, and you know, those <laughs> things are all really cool and very artistic. And I know your audience looks forward to those and is probably highly disappointed in the <laughs> materials that we're discussing. But I thought it might be fun to just have a little word association, like a team building exercise. <laughs> Let's do it with you. So you say something, <laughs> and then I'll say something without thinking too hard, and we'll just uh, kind of go back and forth for a little while. Who starts? You start because I the start. Host. Oh, okay. Let's see. Um, percussion orchestra pieces. Mm. Oklahoma. <laughs>